Hi everyone, my name is Daniel. I'm a certified nutritionist and personal trainer, and today I'm going to be talking about saturated fats. Since the 1960s, saturated fats have gotten such a bad rap for their effect on our heart health. But are they really what we should be avoiding? Or do they have their place in a healthy diet? Now, the American Heart Association has gone to great lengths to ingrain this idea that saturated fats are what cause heart disease. But that's simply untrue. There never was any solid evidence backing up this claim. And in spite of the insufficient research, you guys know the media. They went ahead and vilified saturated fats. They lump them in with trans fats and describe them as a kind that clogs your arteries. But before the low-fat diet had gone mainstream, the government actually had the dietary guidelines right. Milk is about the most perfect food there is. A glass full at every meal is good for you. Cheese is a bodybuilder too. And there are many kinds to choose from. Meat is good for you. And there are many kinds. There's beef. There's pork and ham. There's lamb, and egg a day is good for you too. Okay guys, this is not to say that milk is the most perfect food, but you get the point. Back then it was all about the basics. Meat, milk, butter, eggs, cheese. These were all things that were encouraged because they contributed to the quality of the overall diet. The message back then was very different too. People weren't being told what nutrients they should avoid or eat. They were being told what kinds of foods they should be eating. But life in America was changing. Fast food restaurants were nearly everywhere, processed foods became mass produced, and smoking was so common that even your doctor had his brand of choice. And according to this nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. And let's not forget Crisco, a vegetable shortening that is pretty much like drinking gasoline. As you can tell, the American diet was hitting a real low point, and a health epidemic was on the rise. Once a rare disease before 1920, heart disease emerged to become the nation's number one killer in a span of two decades. At this point, researchers were like, what the, do we do now? Like, they were just scrambling for answers. Minnesota physiologist Ansel Keys seized the opportunity to propose an idea called a diet heart hypothesis. It states that if a diet high in saturated fats raises cholesterol, and cholesterol causes heart disease, then saturated fats must cause heart attacks. Convinced of his theory, Keyes launched a seven-country study in 1958, looking at the frequency of saturated fat intake and heart disease of 12,763 men in seven countries, the United States, Italy, Finland, Greece, the Netherlands, Japan, and two nations of the former country of Yugoslavia, now Croatia and Serbia. He learned that the Japanese and Mediterranean populations, which generally consume a diet lower in saturated fat, had the lowest rates of heart disease, whereas Finland and the United States had the highest. Keyes was so well praised for this nutritional breakthrough that it granted him the cover of Time magazine and shaped nutrition policy and education for many decades to come. Key's findings were deeply flawed, to say the least, and oversimplified the problem. By focusing on a particular nutrient and just totally disregarding other factors, I mean, what were you thinking in a study? You know, physical activity, portion sizes, and sugar consumption, these are things that need to be included. But he just misrepresented the role that saturated fats have in the body. We actually need saturated fats because they promote satiety, so we eat less and maintain a healthy weight. They boost our immune system, destroying viruses and bacteria. They are important for proper brain function, increasing focus and memory, because a whole 60% of our brains actually is fat. They are even a part of every single cell in our bodies, making up the structure of cell membranes. They also help our bodies absorb the fat-soluble vitamins. Now, these include vitamins A, D, E, and K, which are needed to maintain healthy skin, eyes, and bones. So here's the, here's the irony of this. 
While the amount of animal fat in the American diet was decreasing from 1910 to 1970, the incidence of heart disease was increasing. So no, you would think more people would be eating animal fat, and heart disease would be increasing, but that didn't happen. Animal fat declined from 83% to 62%, and butter consumption plummeted from 18 pounds per person per year to just 4. On the contrary, you had vegetable oils that increased a whopping 400% and sugar and processed foods, which increased about 60%. The result of this? Americans were getting fatter. The dietary guidelines launched in 1980 were of no help, as its theoretical rationale on cutting fat practically doubled the rate of obesity. In 1995, no state had an obesity rate over 20%. Now every state in the nation has rates that are greater than 20%. The food industry basically cashed in on America's health crisis. They found a way to manipulate the products to be more appetizing while claiming that the snacks were either low fat or fat free. Let's take a cookie or a granola bar and remove that one nutrient that people are obsessed over. But we have to compensate for the loss in texture and taste. So, okay, let's just add sugar and a ton of artificial ingredients to extend the shelf life of the product. And what you have is a quote unquote health food. I bet you think that crunchy granola bar is loaded with only good things. Not true. It's loaded with fat. Oh, I had no idea. But here's new Kellogg's Low Fat Granola Bar. All that crunchy granola, but only half the fat of the leading crunchy granola bar. Kellogg's Low Fat Granola Bars? Mmm. Hey, these are good. As numerous studies have pointed out, when saturated fats are substituted with sugar and refined carbohydrates, the risk of a heart attack increases as both of these things raise your triglycerides and LDL cholesterol, while lowering your HDL good cholesterol. A 2010 evaluation of 21 studies and almost 350,000 subjects also concluded that saturated fat is okay in moderation and has no significant association with heart disease. When you compare these results to the changes in the way Americans ate, it's pretty telling that saturated fat did not play a role at all. Over a century ago, the average amount of sugar that was consumed per person in a year was 17.5 pounds. As of 2011, that number has risen to 150 pounds per person. And that's just the average. Some people eat much more than that. As for the consumption of man-made fats coming from vegetable oils, that has nearly tripled for the average person, going from about 13 grams to 40 grams per day. These oils are absolutely what you want to be avoiding. They trigger inflammation, raise your blood pressure, and increase your risk of cancer. And when you take a look at the step-by-step -step process of how these rancid industrial oils are made, at the start you have crude vegetable oil, which is dark, sticky, and smelly. It becomes a clean-looking cooking oil only after it is exposed to chemical solvents, steamers, deodorizers, and bleach. So guys, here are the oils that you should be avoiding. The list includes canola, sunflower, cottonseed, peanut, and corn oil, plus things like margarine and shortening. Guys, instead of having these highly processed, rancid vegetable oils, my advice is just stick with traditional fats because at the end of the day, these are quality food sources that are healthy in moderation. These high-fat foods include coconut oil, leaner cuts of fresh meat that are preferably grass-fed and organic when possible, such as beef, pork, lamb, and veal whole milk, full-fat yogurt, butter, and cheese, such as Parmesan, feta, mozzarella, and cheddar, just to name a few. Guys, there's a reason why the saturated fat myth couldn't be proven then and can't be proven now. These foods have been parts of our diets for generations, and blaming new health problems on them just doesn't make any sense. So keep on having them in moderation. Focus on the quality of the foods you eat rather than on nutrients alone. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can click down below to subscribe. I'll have more content coming soon. See you later.